Okay, now we're on to uh, rule interpretation number two. This is actually kind of a complicated situation that emerged in the game uh, my team played. Um, it was Team Columbia versus Team Rundle. Um, about a pit call and the continuation that occurred after that. Um, so I'm going to run you again through the sequence of events uh, and then talk you through it afterwards and try to figure out what's going on. It's kind of an interesting situation because there was a long discussion that occurred after it and it turned out um, when I finally got back to read the rules at home later that night that Alex Ramadan was the only guy who actually knew the rule correctly. Um, so there were multiple people on both sides arguing um, incorrect points of view on both sides of uh, the play. Anyways, let's try to figure this out by first watching um, what happened. Okay, so here I am uh, being unhappy that John Ma scored on me from that nice hammer from Mr. Mark McInnes. Um, okay, so let's go back to uh, where this started. So uh, in the middle of the field here, we have uh, Devin uh, being guarded by Stefan. Um, so these two are going to be uh, crucial because basically Stefan is going to call a pick call as he's trying to guard Devin um, later on in the play. So we'll go through to that. Here's me guarding John Ma back here. So you can hear the pick call there. Here's Devin, um, and here's Stefan over here. As the pick was called, we'll go back just a little bit. The pick is called just after um, Jeff throws the disc here to Tara. And I just said pick call right after that. So basically what happened with me is I heard the pick call and I stopped. Um, knowing that there is a continuation after the pick call. I've read that, but it's hard to actually implement because you're used to just stopping when you hear somebody say pick, um, even though I've been um, encouraged many times in the past that keep playing until play stops. So what happens is the pick was called when this um, passes in the air to Tara, uh, and then after that, um, Stefan is stopped, Devin is stopped, I'm off screen and I'm stopped as well. Uh, they keep playing though. Uh, she throws to Mark, and then Mark throws to John, who, uh, not that John wouldn't have gotten open against me anyways. I had, you know, um, sacrificed multiple deep throws um, in this game, but he still got open after I had stopped, and I was trying to play catch-up with him. That is uh, one reason why I was a little um, cheesed off here. I'm not going to play the rest of the uh, minute-long um, conversation that happened after this. I think instead, we'll just go straight to the rules that come into play here. So... Um, the first rule here is the pick rule itself. Um, so this is 16I.1. A pick occurs whenever an offensive player moves in a manner that causes a defensive player guarding an offensive player to be obstructed by another player. Obstruction may result from contact with or the need to avoid the obstructing player. And there's a third part to this. Uh, if play stops according to 16C, and we'll get to that in a second, players reposition according to 16C4. In addition, the obstructed player is then allowed to move to recover the relative position lost because of the pick. Okay, so um, what is this 16C all about? That is the continuation rule. So this reads, any time an infraction is called, the continuation rule applies. Continuation rule, play stops from the thrower in possession acknowledges that an infraction has been called. If a call is made when the disc is in the air or the thrower is in the act of throwing, or if the thrower fails to acknowledge the call and subsequently attempts a pass, play continues until the outcome of that pass is determined. For the purpose of the continuation rule, an uncontested stall that occurs after another call is treated the same as an incomplete pass. Play then either stops or continues according to the following conditions. So there's basically four conditions here because there's two, feature, two binary features at play. So um, there's calls made by the thrower, that's part one. And that's broken down into um, both like before the throw and after the throw. Uh, and then there's part two for calls made by non-thrower. So that's the situation that we were in with this play. Uh, and then there's two conditions here. If the team that called the infraction has possession, which is not the case. Instead, we have if the team that committed the infraction has um, possession. Then uh, part one, if the infraction affected the play, 
play stops, and the disc reverts to the thrower unless the specific rule says otherwise. So this infraction did not affect the play because Devin just um, stands off to the side and Stefan just kind of waits there with him. So we're in um, case two here. If the infraction did not affect the play, play stops, and the result of the play stands. So play never stopped, um, which is kind of the problem here. The interpretation problem that we ran into had to do ultimately with this clause. Uh, the play stops when the thrower in possession acknowledges that an infraction has been called. And that was the part that I remembered. So basically, the other team never acknowledged that an infraction had been called, and somehow in my mind, I thought that that meant they could just keep throwing the disc around forever until they decided to stop. And that's not true. Um, <clears throat> basically, what we're dealing with, if a call is made when the disc is in the air, um, that was the case in this particular play. Then play continues until the outcome of that pass is determined. They can't just keep throwing the disc around uh, forever. So in this case, if we go back a few seconds, um, the pick call is right around here. And the throw was in the air, so it should have stopped uh, right where it got here. Um, and then at that point, everybody, or Stefan could have um, caught up to wherever he was guarding uh, Devin, and then we re would have restarted play right here. Um, it's possible Terry probably just didn't hear Stefan's pick call, um, or Mark after that. There were multiple people didn't hear it, so Stefan could just yell it louder. But the main point is, even after all the sequence of events where they throw it uh, to Mark, and then Mark throws the score, that all gets undone. It doesn't matter that it didn't affect the play at all play is supposed to stop um, because of the pick call. So that's a tricky one, but hopefully this clarifies it and we won't have to have any minute-long discussions in the middle of what's supposed to be a fun game in the future.